Game of Thrones episode four for the last of the Starks. We have our Game of Thrones roundtable panel back here today to discuss. It is a very controversial episode in terms of the feedback that people had after watching it. Jake Stevens, Juan Signaris, Marley Austin, our wonderful weekend morning producer, Heather Case. So the episode opens, they pay homage to the dead, they burn the bodies, and then they have this feast. And there are some things that happens in this feast, number one with Daenerys and mm -hmm. how she feels at the beginning of the feast versus the end. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been starting for a couple episodes now. She's definitely an outsider and realizing she will never be one of them or accepted. Mm -hmm. I mean, it started when Theon came back and said, I'm pledging to you, Sansa, not to you who I've already pledged. And she's observing people's reactions I around think the room. Beyond being an outsider, she's also kind of lonely. I mean, she doesn't have, yeah. I mean, beyond John, she doesn't have any family. She doesn't have really any friends. She has advisors, but that's, keep that's different. And seeing, you know, uh, Tyrion and Jaime with Brienne and Podrick, like their mm -hmm. friends, their family, they're celebrating together. She doesn't have that sense of community, I don't think. She is, I mean, she's the outsider. She was raised away from Westeros. She's playing on her family claim, but she has no deep-seated, legitimate, from birth ties. I mean, she was born there, doesn't remember it, and she spent the rest of her life in exile, so. She's learning a new land and finding out that there are alliances already in place. Well, I think I want that, that entire feast scene before we start getting into what we didn't like about the episode, because I think there's a lot of that here at the table. That was really, that was one of the few moments I really liked because it was really good visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. There wasn't much dialogue. There, you didn't need a script for that moment. It was just really well directed and really well put together to show you her isolation. She's by herself at that table and you cut away to her advisors, her friends, everybody else surrounded by other people enjoying their time and enjoying that love. And it really fills in the, that character of her and what she's feeling like. So it's good foreshadowing, it was a good moment and something I really liked in that moment before it starts to unravel. We also see this drinking game that's taking place and later Jamie joining Brienne in her room. A very awkward I'm scene. so mad about that, really. You don't like, like it? I, I didn't like it either. I, I think their relationship was so great as a friendship. Mm -hmm. I did not need that, that relationship to proceed in any romantic direction whatsoever. <laughs> right. And the fact that it did, I'm kind of bothered because, like, why can't men and women just be friends yeah. and just respect each other for being strong knights of the Seven Kingdoms without there did. being romance <laughs> involved? Right. Well, and this leads to a bigger question. There's a lot of criticism coming from various quarters about several of the female characters and things they said or things that happened to them in this episode. And I think one of them is in the last three episodes we've seen two of our singular female characters hook up with someone for different reasons and perhaps we all liked the Arya one better than the Brienne one but it's interesting whether they felt like they needed to be forced to do that especially now that Arya has at least for the moment rejected Gendry's proposal of marriage um, yeah, it was an interesting moment in episode two but now you're thinking about are they just kind of forcing their female characters mm -hmm. into more traditional roles instead of letting the knight and the assassin stand out for who their main character traits. Also, another character who was treated really badly, people think, is Missande, who was, yeah. you know, brutally murdered in this past episode. And people pointed out that she's the only black woman on this show and she was like brutally murdered in chains as her final moment. As I mean, a plot device. Right. And I think like her final word being Dracotis. That was very empowering, I think, mm -hmm. but in the way that she died and the way that her death moves forward the plot, that's disrespectful to a lot of women of color from mm -hmm. what I've seen online. All right, so let's, let's kind of do a wrap up. There's been a lot of criticism online with how they're playing out mm -hmm. this season. What are your overall takeaways so far with how quickly they're trying to move things along and maybe things that they are missing out on and the lack of depth in the storytelling? Uh, I'm here for the ride. I'm entertained. Like, yeah, I have my qualms with it, but I'm not going to sit here and complain right now. Like, I'm in the moment. I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like some things, and I could criticize. I'm not the one writing the show, and if I wanted a better <laughs> show, I could write my own. I agree that I'm on for the ride. I'm concerned, as I said last week, as to how they will wrap this story up and if they're going to do it in an entertaining fashion. And I think we're getting closer and closer to reaching an end of a mega hit that we're going to look back on in TV history years, decades down the line, and write it down as that was disappointing. 
Yeah, I'm going to agree with Gio on that one. I am now concerned about how they're going to wrap this season up. I thought, you know, at the beginning we said, we, oh, we got five episodes left, we're fine. Oh, we got four episodes <laughs> yeah. left, we're fine. Oh, three more, we're fine. Now we're like, we have two episodes left, and I don't know <laughs> if we're fine. Like, I don't know if we're going to make it through this mm -hmm. with satisfying storytelling that the fans are going to appreciate as much as the previous seven seasons. I think our next two episodes are destruction of Cersei, destruction of Daenerys. And there could be satisfying elements depending on how the mechanics of those things work. But given what they've been skipping over and glossing over in the last couple episodes, it's very concerning that this might be really trite. And if we think we have some complaints about things that happened, uh, I'll go on my feminist track concerning women this week, concerning, concerning female characters this week, it really makes me wonder if they can do it justice for the last two episodes. All right, well, we'll see. They're there. They're in we'll Westeros. See. They're at King's Landing. We'll see what happens in the next episode. And, of course, we're going to be back next week talking more about what's happened leading up to the final last ever episode of Game of Thrones.